Welcome to the Spa Girls podcast, the self-publishing podcast for authors. You're in the right place for the best writing, marketing and publishing advice, plus interviews with industry experts and best-selling authors. I'm Cheryl Phipps. I'm Shah Barrett. I'm Wendy Bella. And I'm Trudy J. Welcome, everyone. Hello. 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 <laughs> New year. New year. New start. New beginnings. New, New year, business. New Absolutely. Absolutely. And with that in mind, we've got a business plan. A business yes. plan for all of you to sit down and fill in because the lovely Shah has actually created a PDF for you to fill in. And she's you're so going to. Awesome. She is awesome. <laughs> Other and then places we're... you would pay thousands for this. Here thousands, on the Spa thousands. Girls podcast, it's yours for the princely price of just a <laughs> quick click of the finger. How's that? Nada. Yeah. Yeah. I sign yeah. up to our newsletter. Is that what it's the price I of? I don't even have to do Not that. Not even that. Oh, no, 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 but no. you could do it. You could. Could. Or you could join us on Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Patreon. Yeah, all of that. As a Patreon. <laughs> Drop Patreon. us the review. Give us a can, smile. How's can you it? tell yeah. we've had a very relaxed day back <laughs> Yeah. 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 And now it's it's like, sunny. Oh, it's oh, sunny oh, in New Zealand. Oh, There's no yeah. rain. It's yeah. glorious. But it can get a bit looser when, you mm -hmm. know, the, the sun's out, to be fair. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Back in, so, business planning. So, maybe this isn't something that we talk too often because we talk about the um, publishing the the actual act of getting the books online and writing the books mm. and doing what and the marketing mm. the books, but this is actually a business plan. As in, you are an entrepreneur who happens to have books as your your product, and we want you to be to think about yourself as a business. Mm. It's, it's taking your staff, your mental sort of to the next mm. level of being a professional. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not a hobbyist. You're a, you're no. a business person, yeah. um, as well as a creative also type person. So. Mm -hmm. Um, where do we want to start? Do we start with the big picture? I think so. I think it's always good to start with the big, big start. At the, I personally like starting at the top and kind of working your way down to more than nitty gritty. Just yeah. approaching anything really. Okay. Yeah, start nice. with the start yeah. with the end result in mind first. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so the idea is what's the end result that you want? Um, whether it's to uh, make a certain amount on on a book, um, whether mm -hmm. it's to make a living as an author, whether yeah. it's to I don't know, like what are some of the goals that, or, or big term or long term visions that we could kind of have as authors? I mean, do they, they adjust, right? They must adjust as time goes on. Long -term Absolutely. Yeah. Is, is so it, leaving yeah. work, leaving yeah, work to write it. full time. Or right supplementing current income for yeah. a certain yeah. amount, you know. Um, Retiring yeah. your husband or whatever. This this yeah. one that we've got is the 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 one that you put together, Shah. Is the idea that it's a yearly one? Is am I right yeah. about that? Yeah, it is. And mm -hmm. I mean, we will mention this at the end of the podcast as well. But I mean, business plans should be organic. It's not like that you're locked into um into anything. It's it's your a a living document for you mm -hmm. to keep updating. So it's not mm -hmm. necessarily. It's a little bit different from goal setting in that this is kind of the plan on how you're going to achieve those goals. So it's absolutely organic and things change, right? You change the world, publishing world might shift or you might, mm -hmm. the further you get into writing books, you might decide you want to veer in a different direction or you love it so much you might want to go more into that. Um, so it's cool to change, but it's, it's really about just giving you a starting point and because I think for a lot of us we're loath to put things in writing because it feels either too permanent or we're worried about making a mistake and so I just want to reassure mm. you that this is you can print off as many copies as you like yeah. and, I, really, uh, I really like the idea of doing it say once a year in the end of say five years or whatever you've got these five yeah. documents mm. or even you could do it six monthly whatever these documents mm. that you can look at and see the, yeah. the progression and the change because yeah. while well, you say it's mm. organic maybe some stuff would stay the same because it's slightly Absolutely. longer term and stuff yeah. some stuff would kind of be moved or changed or or even drop off because you've done it like that's yeah. kind of a neat mm. way to to see Absolutely. your progression and remind and it you. Is, it's like a it's a snapshot at that time right and mm. it is it is good and I think it's also um likely that nothing will ever turn out exactly how you plan for it right mm. and that's mm. okay too that's just that's just the process so mm. yeah. it's, it's not that you're think, doing anything wrong how, how you're feeling at the time of writing yes. a particular book is the same as when you're planning because mm. sometimes you think things are so achievable you you'll write down far too much and sometimes you think I just can't do it you know I'm 
really struggling with what I am doing. So I'm, all I'm going to try for is this. So I think sometimes maybe somewhere in the middle for your very first one is a good idea. You know, it's like you don't you don't want to beat yourself up for not achieving, Yeah. but you don't know what you're capable of unless Yeah. you try. Yeah. Mm. And I think the other really important part of this um, is going through the act of business planning. And I mean, you can use as many pages or as few pages as you like. We're, we're, it, don't get um, freaked out when you look at it, the document and find it's 20 pages. It's, it's not that scary at all. Um, but It, it, part of it is actually kind of confirmation to yourself that you're taking this seriously as well, because I think a lot of people feel maybe shy about declaring, you know, that they're a writer or that they're an author, particularly if they haven't published anything or they're only just at the beginning of their publishing journey. And it's a little bit like, I mean, business planning is, is perfectly normal. It's what you, the act of what you do if you're starting a business and or running a business and so it's almost like putting yourself in that position to where you want to be you know not Yeah. necessarily where you are at the moment and I think the act of doing it just and maybe it shows other people around you but you're not doing it for other people you're doing it for yourself in terms of Seeing it written down, right? yeah Mm. And nobody I think that's else actually right has to see it, so that's a no good thing. but No, it's you absolutely seeing not it seeing it that tangible thing it's okay yeah to think a thought of what you want to be but to see it yeah on on paper in front of you yeah you're like hmm Yeah, I I want writing that it down, do, do, there's, we've got that, you know, the mythological legendary story of how Wendy wrote down the things that she wanted to do on the piece of paper. Yeah. up on the wall, right We saw, up we've there. seen it. And we've seen it. And it, and feel it like was that like, needs these to are be the framed things. And they, it's and in they, a plastic case up on the wall and she crossed it off and she did every single thing because it was there, it was visible, it was permanent. And she was working towards it. And there was no mention of time frames, I believe. No, there wasn't, was there? no I I think I were I think there were but I think I might have um changed those slightly as as we went on and that's the thing when you're first starting out you actually don't know what's involved yeah so there is there's a lot of Yeah, adjustments it's a learning and tweaking curve. Yeah. there right um and Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's okay, right? yeah and that is okay because you don't know if this book's gonna sell well or this book or where you're at you know like so there is adjustment necessary but Mm. that And and is good we have all been guilty, the four of us have been guilty of saying things like, oh, I, you know, I've only just completed a manuscript, or I've only written one book, I've only written two books or three or four. But oh my gosh, when you see that written down, I wrote a book. I this is my book and I wrote it. You know, it doesn't matter how many you've got, that should still fill you with joy and you know, you should be proud and happy and yeah yeah. absolutely absolutely 100%. So so step one, find your joy, be proud, find your vision, yeah big something picture. big. what do you want from it i think Big that's picture. always good yeah What are you thinking of? And I think because we've got long-term vision and goals, and I, I do think maybe there's two different things here. There's the, the long-term vision, and yeah then there's the this year's vision maybe. Yeah, So, so absolutely. Different maybe people you can respond even put different your yeah, ways to that. You know, I yeah. think it's sort of some people are naturally very big distance, able to sort of visualize into the distance and Mm. others I aren't. struggle with that. I don't like that really Getting long-term out of bed stuff. and I knowing don't like what that. I'm going to have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Some people do quarterly, don't they? Quarterly, Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We've had plans. Sarah Cannon on. If you want to Oh, um, yes, yes. investigate that, the HB90, which is Mm. a 90-day planning. I Mm. personally love that. But um, the business plan is a little different in that it's really more sort of it goes above that, almost sits above that level of planning kind of thing. So you could Yeah. use this and then break it down if Absolutely. you wanted to. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, and the next thing is, and it's something that we we have been asked to cover on here in terms of like dealing with taxation and business structure, and we can't because we're in New Zealand and it's completely different. And all of us have different, you know, setups here for our how we run our businesses. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And we're not lawyers or accountants, And and I no, wouldn't want to be and giving it's advice it is very on either of those. exactly. No, And then and it could be wrong, you know. in the in the, in the US, you've got different states. You've got you no, know, so it's there's there is no one size fits all. Um, some pe so. If you're asking online and authors forums, be very cautious about somebody saying, you know, you absolutely need this business structure. You don't because that's their opinion. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. so, And um, the circumstances. yeah, so it's really Mm. more So when you say about business structure, you mean like whether you're a 
we're a, well in our case over here sole trader, sole trader this is we're corporation gonna, yeah versus, all of that kind of stuff yeah i don't absolutely. know the other names for stuff and what is it yeah. in the states when it's a division of sole trader the, is there a do they individual that? Yeah, I don't individual. know. And there's different yeah. things in this LLCs yeah. See, and all this and that. And yeah. so there's just, a good example of why yeah. we can't do this. Lots know. of letters. Yeah. Lots of letters. <laughs> Every country would probably be different, right? No, yeah. And, yeah. and that's right. And your business structure impacts on how you're for tax and all of that kind of thing. And it depends what else is going on in your world. So so that that is absolutely something that you need to get advice on. But mm -hmm. even if you're not planning on doing any business structure, that's what you put at the moment. I'm just you know <laughs> doing this is me kind of thing so yeah. it's just something to think about and um yeah but everybody is unique so that's mm -hmm. get personal advice on that one yeah mm -hmm. you can certainly yeah. see what other people are doing and how they're achieving it but if they're not in your country with similar circumstances then it's really it's not apples and apples is it it's, no and Lots of oranges and watermelons. And also those yeah. things change. Peach like, thrown in and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so, it, things but think laws banana. change. Things change in the like like I remember when we first started out, I had to ring the states and get yes. a um I remember that ITN to, number? to get an that ITIN number. I had to line up at the embassy. Yeah. yeah. The embassy yeah. yeah. Whereas oh. now we don't have to do any of those things and you can just use yeah. your New Zealand tax number. So this yeah. was in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, this is this was when dinosaurs <laughs> were still roaming the earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yes. stuff, you know? <laughs> I know. Annoyingly, a lot of sometimes though, a lot of things are very US centric, and they don't yes. like Amazon. Um, I'm looking at you, and they don't well, they are realize that there's company. other countries oh, yeah. in the world. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is very much personal circumstances. Cheryl says. So yeah. okay, so that's okay, good. So number that's the three. Side. Yeah. So the next is know who you're writing and know what you're writing and who you're writing for is that yeah mm -hmm. yeah so and it sounds so basic but i think um as we work with and we've worked sort of personally with a number of different authors this year and one of the one of the actually quite a difficult thing can be when you're sort of starting out on the self-publishing journey is actually knowing what you're writing as in mm. what genre or what what it is you want to write you know kind of mm. and we're not saying you have to fit into a square box kind of thing but it's it, if you want to it's a good idea to kind of actually verbalize it like mm. what are your writing. expectations yeah and, and yeah. who How are you, you writing for who are you trying mm. to reach with it so mm. you know if mm. you're writing cozy mysteries what kind of cozy mystery are you going to write mm. are you going to write paranormal like it's that kind of thing mm. um or if you're going to write cozy mysteries and mafia romance, for example, you know, mm. it's that quite mm. a bit different. It really even, helps. Yeah. Even if you can't figure out the genre, like there's a, uh, and maybe newer authors wouldn't necessarily know the genre or know yeah. that is mm. enough about the, their writing or whatever. Even yeah. just a feel or a vibe that you want. Like, yeah. Like for me, it would be kind of magical books and. Yeah. Or, yeah. or books like like you know or like I always think of Steph um Stephanie Holmes who has um something like oh she's changed her thing over time but it's oh. always like kooky spooky books like she's yeah. sort of got mm -hmm. that kind of gothic quirky, feel yeah gothic yeah. feel mm. but also quirky but also um mm. there's always well, no not all her books but there's you know often that paranormal element you know mm -hmm. like that kind mm -hmm. of stuff so so but it, it describes her as an author what what yeah. she writes so that somebody picking up her book or her covers or that automatically know that. But I think writing it down kind of solidifies that for you as an author. This is who I am. This is what I write. Mm -hmm. It's not to say I can't write something else, mm -hmm. but maybe if I write something so different to this, maybe I might need a pen name, mm -hmm. you know, just little things like that. Or maybe I didn't realize that it's actually what I wrote, that mm -hmm. that encompasses everything I write. Like for me, I write cozy mysteries, but I write culinary cozy mysteries and I now write um, paranormal cozy mysteries as well. But when I go into each of those, I have a different hat on. But my overarching thing that I would say about that pen name is that she is a cozy mystery author writing about small towns and family and mm -hmm. um yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's and it. I think, and even if you can't, as Trudy says, put a label necessarily on the subgenre, mm. um, what kind of, who, who's reading it? Like, because mm. you're probably a reader of that. So, you know, what mm. type of reader would it be? Somebody that loves reading, you know, XYZ, um, mm. you know, or loves watching 
virgin river and likes their romances mm. you know without open door sex kind of thing you know i think i think that. you have to pick a lane a little bit mm. Mm. You know, yeah. it's okay. Like, yes, with Steph, she's got that label, which is basically you're going to get the same sort of flavor in all her books. But I think when you're starting out, it's quite important to pick a lane yeah. to cement <laughs> yourself somewhere so you can build a fan base. So you're not mm -hmm. leaping from one to the other, to the yeah. other, to the other. And um, I think some people do that, but and, to, and, and that's fine in terms of figuring it out. Why, yes. yes. But if you but do don't it, have any you are figuring, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't have that expectation that yeah. you can jump yeah. from genre to genre. Mm -hmm. And have be readers. aware yeah yes yeah. i think you have to be aware of what you're doing and why you're doing yeah. it if you're doing it to test yourself yeah. and readers if that's what they like yeah then that's a very good plan yeah. but if you're just doing it because you think oh i'd like to write that oh i'd like to write that and you think like, you're going to sell yeah, yeah. That's probably it's not, not such case. a good plan one way, <laughs> one way to kind of get yourself in the mindset i often think is think of this business plan as if you were setting up a, a store or a shop um mm -hmm. and your local community and, and what is it you're going to sell in there what are you going to put on the shelves how is the mm -hmm. store going to look um how many hours do you want to work in there kind of thing if you think of that it, that way that can maybe help target down a little or refine down a little bit of what what it is you want on those digital bookshelves you know mm -hmm. um so i was i was doing this a little bit yesterday in a similar way but i was on tiktok and I was looking through trying to find comparable authors and I'd searched for urban fantasy and I started some fun and I was like, mm, I'm not sure I feel connected to these authors and these things that are coming up. And then I searched um, fantasy romance and suddenly I was like, oh, these are more the ones I like, mm, you know, right. like, and it was, yeah. it was just, and it just was a vibe. It was just the yeah. one, you know, like between the two genres, and I knew immediately which one that it, one was like that I was more attracted to, and it didn't mm -hmm. mean to say that the urban fantasy ones were bad or that they were, mm -hmm. you know, but it was just it was just I knew mm. straight away, and I think you can, yeah, there's like think about that bookshop or go to a platform like Insta or mm -hmm. TikTok or even Amazon and just look around and get a vibe, get a feel, yeah, get some blurbs, look at some covers, mm -hmm. and that'll help you too, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and, okay. and again, just reiterating, you can change this is can change this, but it's good to have a starting point because it will help dictate then in terms of um <clears throat> for example, just plucking this out of the air, um, the cost of your covers. If you're writing like mm -hmm. a, a fantasy, often those are more expensive because they're hand drawn, blah, 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 blah. You know, so it's kind of it is kind of part of the business planning to know this mm. it's good good to know yeah, yeah. all righty okay so, so here comes the next fun bit <laughs> which is planning your projects so this is this is what you're doing you know the previous was why you're doing it um and now it's what what is your what are you actually planning for 2024 mm. and maybe 2025 because a lot of things will carry over um mm. you can print off as many of these pages as, as if you as you want but I think um just remember that we always have a tendency to underestimate how long things take <laughs> exactly and then and then kind of shame ourselves for not completing yeah 100 books a yeah. year because we heard that someone else did that yeah I said I would do four but I just can't get yeah. to the fourth one and Sarah mm -hmm. talked about this didn't she on the mm -hmm. podcast with us we will put a link to that in the show notes but good. um it, mm -hmm. it was exactly that it was about knowing what you can do realistically and not beating yourself up mm -hmm. um and so and so it's quite very often, much a learning thing yeah. <laughs> as well because I plan every year and I and I realized a year or two ago that I wasn't including the school holidays like it was like uh, the school holidays uh, weren't a thing for me exist yeah. and I <laughs> thought that I could just keep working through yeah. you know and it wasn't going to impact me and I wasn't going to yeah. take time off and I was yeah. like, you know and it's like I'm, all that kind of stuff is, yeah, is I know something and so that you need after to we, we plan for like we've got you know, we're not planning any headache days or any, you know, yeah. family drama days or anything like that. You know, it, it's just everything is just going to be smooth sailing in 2024. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. you've got to plan for variables. Well, yeah. the, and, and not just that, you need to have some downtime. You absolutely mm -hmm. do. So the best way that. to make sure you do it is mm -hmm. to put it on paper and yeah. not not push anything into there yeah. I mean we know you will yeah. <laughs> but you know I mean as little as possible seriously this is, I also think, 
if you spend a bit more time on something and you give yourself a bit more space to do it, that you have the potential to make it even better. Do you know what I, I don't know. Yeah. I just I, I think it, it is very easy and we know ourselves and we've been in this this world for a long time, but it is very easy to feel the pressure of speed, whether yes. it's production yes. of or speed of anything, honestly, of of mm. learning new things, of writing, of yeah. of releasing, of just everything feels very fast paced at times yeah. and and you're lazy if you don't yeah if you don't do that well yeah it's, it's just rubbish yeah it's just, yeah you know. so it makes me um, think I of think that is it more haste less speed is that the right saying yeah it was, you know like oh yeah That's it's right. like speeding <laughs> through makes <laughs> you get it through it faster is um I shouldn't say this, but my, my daughter at school there's another girl in her class and she says she always finishes first but she never gets it right and it's like mm. there's no yeah. point being fast if yeah. you're not actually doing it right, you know, like these, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not putting all your ducks in a row and you're not mm -hmm. setting up the, you know, if you're really fast at writing a book, but it's not a very good book, uh, you know, mm -hmm. or you're really fast at, I don't know, doing the editing, but you actually haven't picked up all the things that need to be edited mm -hmm. or you haven't got mm -hmm. an external editor to do yeah. something because you can't, mm -hmm. you don't have time. Like, no. Don't miss steps. Not in yeah. this game. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you get all the steps followed. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, um, and this is also the opportunity to think about how you want to publish your books, whether you want to be publishing across all platforms, or whether you want to look at a period or a <clears throat> short term or long term of being exclusive with Amazon, because that does impact in, in terms of time for the, the management of things, of mm -hmm. the uploading and the ongoing maintenance of, you know, mm -hmm. keywords, categories, all of that kind of stuff. So it's good to have that in mind. And that that also directly links back to what it is you're publishing and where that type of book tends to be published, you know. So I think that's, um, it, and it can, you don't have to necessarily um, know all the answers, but I think it's a nice, even if you have a projected what you, ideally how you want to do it, I think mm -hmm. it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, and just, so I mean, personally, I think, I mean, how do you guys do you plan ahead? How many books you're writing a year? Like, what are your yeah. what's your process? I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't plan as stringently as Wendy does, but I I definitely have an idea of how many books I'm going to write, <clears throat> and then I fill the time appropriately. Like, um, I know how long a book is going to take. Mm -hmm. So it's just and that comes with in, experience, doesn't it? Comes yeah, with experience, absolutely. and also the fact I know my editors how long they will take. Yeah, I know how long my art readers will take, but uh, sorry, my beta readers, but that can fluctuate, you know, because yeah. they are also people mm -hmm. who are having lives doing things. Yeah, and also especially your review readers, yeah, your art readers, because you know you want that to all follow through and be there when that book goes up. So you have to find a way to do it. You're going to have to guess at first, but then you leave a buffer in, I think, yeah. just mm -hmm. in case they're not back in time for the date that you had in your head. Because you can always, you know, especially if you do a pre-order, you can always bring it forward, Yeah, you know, but you can't put it back. Yeah. Not, not You can, but it's not a good thing if you're going to no. annoy Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What about you, Trudy? Have you got, do you plan ahead? I plan. I plan lots. I plan all the time. Whether I follow the plan is a whole other thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, That's okay. But I, but I do find that if I at least know where I'm going mm. and I have, and I'm better at following plans now these days, like mm -hmm. I kind of understand how I work and the things that I'm doing. So, um, for example, I wanted to finish another book by the 31st of December, and that's a week now that I'm going to and I'm not going to finish it, but that's okay because I'll finish it maybe a week or two after that. But I'll mm -hmm. still, you know, like I'm, yeah. I'm within <laughs> range of that goal and I don't have yeah. a, I haven't, I, I I don't, I haven't got it booked up on pre-order because I'm not entirely certain. Yeah, I just, I just don't like. <laughs> but then you also have a child home for like how many weeks? Eight weeks yes. or something? Yeah. Yes, two months. <laughs> so yeah I just can't yeah, yeah. so yeah. so I do know what I want to do and I and I will mm -hmm. yeah like I you know no, I finished a book in November and I was really proud of myself for that because that was a you know like it was actually yeah. second edits and it was you know like a, a, I'm mm -hmm. getting a really good process in place and I had planned for that and I had I do have plans in place I don't always meet those plans but 
that's okay because I just kind of almost roll them over and just keep mm -hmm. keep to it and mm -hmm. yeah I just mm -hmm. life happens and kids get sick mm -hmm. or you stuff you I know. think it yeah life just gets in you just can say life you know yeah, like, life happens so yeah life happens worries. I'm the same I've got I have a plan but I my my deadlines are pretty strict I'm pretty strict with mine so if yeah, I yeah. am mm -hmm. quite um if I'm if I've got three weeks to go and I'm only halfway through a book or two weeks or I don't know what do I usually I can't remember yeah. how long it takes me anyway but um <laughs> you, can, usually you, write, can, you can stay up all night and write whereas she, I can't yeah, do that because I've got to yeah. so I story. usually can write a book in a month uh, yeah. I, I push it that's what I that's like but now I'm going to push it out a little bit mm. but what I'm saying is if I've got a deadline then I will meet it yeah. no mm. matter what it takes even if mm. it puts me in bed for three weeks mm. after but yeah no mm. uh, that's well, just the way it goes and and plus that's writing a book no matter how long or short it takes you that's just one part of getting a book published there's so many other things to do mm. like with the editing and all that and getting the edits back yeah, yeah. and then if they say <clears> you've got a major overhaul you just weep quietly into your keyboard for a while yeah. and then uh you know do it i like to allow too time. much of that now but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i remember exactly. in the old days those and, those and edits that were brutal and that's another important thing to why you're trying to plan you know, even if you're having to mind, okay, I'm going to write two books this year, I'm going to write three books and ideally, you know, or maybe one one every four months or whatever. Mm. But we're going to talk about this on another podcast. We won't cover it now, but that's, you know, in terms of booking editors and cover designers mm. and that kind of thing, it is good to have an idea, a timeline um, mm. in mind because mm. you have to book ahead, as Cheryl was saying about, mm. yeah, there's, there's a lot mm. to be lot to be done so welcome mm. to the world of yeah. <laughs> self-publishing yeah. <laughs> and that's something that maybe is good to have in there is like okay this is mm. how long it's going to take this is mm. what I want to book the editor for this is going to mm. is that and this is a learned that, thing but... too and I think when you're starting out it, it is very much how long is a piece of string how long it's going to mm. take you to finish things and mm. and also in terms of the hours available you know I cannot tell you how many people that we've had on this podcast that have said when they gave up their uh, day job to write full time they thought they would have this entire vacuum of hours mm. in a day and actually mm. in many cases it took a long time to adjust to, yeah. to not you, I, you write more hours you yeah. spend more hours working yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny more. because you because lots, maybe lots before you when you're working you maybe wrote in the evenings or in the mornings yeah. or at your lunch hour <laughs> whereas now you Often what happens is that you stop writing in your lunch hour and you give yourself a break from the writing. You know, it's almost mm -hmm. you stop doing those extra hours and you're doing the same hours. I think that, yeah, I do way more than I used to do when I was working. Well, oh, and, yeah. and also the, as time goes on, the more books you have up, the more work you actually have to yeah. do. Yeah, well, it's not it. like you just forget about them. Oh, no. Only working on this book and all the other books don't matter because <clears throat> actually they do if you want a yeah. steady income. Yeah, mm. absolutely. The, the well, writing is the most important part, though, and I think oh, it can be sure. really easy to get swamped by mm. all the other stuff. But well, that's, see, so that's why we're saying planning it. Well, plan the planned projects could also be something like, um, like for example, this year, a big project for me was going wide. Absolutely. Um, and so that could be one of my planned projects for the year yeah. or mm. um, or to get all the box sets done for all my series mm. or, yeah. or um, figure Getting out Getting audio books done or, or translations. Or, yeah, or, or translations, yeah. Audio, yeah. you know, all of those things. So each of those things in themselves could be, or or to get my promos sorted so that I'm definitely mm. doing one a month or something, you know, like mm -hmm. like yeah. that kind of thing could be one of your projects as well as a writing project. It doesn't have to just be that. Yeah, mm. and, and if think, you're sitting there thinking, "Oh, I just want to write the book," yeah, but, um, no, we've got. If, if we had a t-shirt with "I just want to write the book" on, I think we would be millionaires. So, note yeah. to self, we must do that. But <laughs> if you're doing this, if you're doing this as a business, then it's not just about writing the book. You know, there's a lot of other stuff as well. You're running a business. You're running a publishing yeah. company, mm. even if it's one book, <laughs> and you're selling it for profit. Um, Welcome to the business world. <laughs> so what what have we got next? That next we're talk is the how you're going to sell your and I call them products because again going back to that store analogy, you mm. know, it could be an ebook, it could be a print book, it could be a hardcover, it could be um, different translations, audio books, all of that kind of stuff. It's it's how are you going to sell your products how are you going to get people into your store and that's what I mean by and it's it's a lot it's a lot to think about 
this is where I think people often will write the book and then think, oh, well, I need to do it marketing now. Well, actually, the marketing, as we've many mentioned many times, starts when you're thinking about what it is you're going to write and knowing who your readers are. That's that's the marketing. Advertising is what you do at the end <laughs> when you've got, got your book. So um, it all kind of works together um, and you... You need to, it makes life so much easier if you can put some thought into who you're aiming for and how you're going to sell your book before you actually <clears throat> complete writing it. It just mm -hmm. makes it so much easier. I do okay. think, though, that someone's writing their first book, it's going to first be really book, hard for them to think. First in those book, terms. you just want to write the book, honestly. And the chances are <clears throat> that you're not going to sell many copies. And I think it's just easier to just lay that out there. We hope you will. We want you to be. The an outlier complete <laughs> outlier but i think it's it's more realistic to go into it knowing that you're gonna serve it's your, your apprenticeship. apprenticeship in many ways mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um i don't know many songwriters for example that have a, a number one hit on off the first song that they ever wrote you know yeah. often it's a journey and it's a you, you're a craftsperson so the first pot that comes out of the corn may not be perfect, but the tenth one might be, right? And you can't get to the tenth one without the first one. So That's you can't, exactly right. you can't skip to the tenth. You have to go through the first, yeah. second, third, fourth, whatever, mm -hmm. to yeah. get there. And it's a process and a journey. And I and I wish we had a magic wand to make you jump to that. I but wish I we had a magic wand journey. for me to I jump to that. I don't think no, I think it's all miss. part of why we're who we are today, yeah, right? But you want to all learn. The bits and, and the downs and the ups and the yeah. sideways. It's all part of the journey. Unfortunately, the learning learning no matter whether it's in life or with books usually comes from the, the sticky parts right the, the, yeah <laughs> the highs and the lows are what you will always so, remember yeah, yeah unfortunately you just want to skip I don't get know. them out there honestly mm. get those get those learning. copies out They're there all and just put those books on the shelf and mm. um yeah and then the other part that i think is really important because i see a lot of people wanting to spend a lot of money and it really worries me um is the bean counting part the finances part and i think it's really important that you have a budget that you can comfortably stick to particularly when it comes to costs of produ producing those first few books mm -hmm. um and i just the, the big thing that i want to say is before you sp don't spend money that you can't afford to lose, particularly on advertising. Um, mm. I, I certainly would not go into to debt to do, you know, run ads on until you're really a really confident writer that you mm. are absolutely nailing your subgenre and you know your readers and you've got got a fairly good head of steam under you, or you're you know where you're going. I just you. You can spend a lot of money on ads on a book that you're not going to have any traction with, or it's not going to have mm. on selling. So I just, I just want to caution budget. on that one. You need a budget. Um, budget, yeah, yeah. And even and, just down to knowing how much it's going to cost you to get an editor in the cover. Absolutely, um, they, and you also, know, you but there's other costs one, as well, always, right? Those are the so, so ones, you so. need to know there are costs associated with this, and like any business, it does require costs. Some that you can save mm. on, that you can swap with other authors that kind of thing but other things like if you're buying a formatting software whether it's vellum mm. or atticus there's or, or not or if you're going using a free one that kind of thing it's really good to have your you know numbers down um mm. i think especially at the beginning you can always look to um amping up as the career, your career goes on yeah. yeah as the money comes in and things change Absolutely. yeah don't over over overspend or don't spend what you haven't no. got no and and again at the beginning i would be cautious about commissioning a very expensive custom cover say for your first book when you're again not quite nailing that that genre you can get some really really on market and we understand the ex, yeah the excitement of wanting to get oh. a great cover because that's part of the fun but and you want it in your head, right? you, you can visualize it so therefore you need somebody to create like it's it's mm -hmm. really i totally get the desire but um yeah but but equally you're running a business and businesses mm. require investment like wouldn't, and, wouldn't you put your best you know, foot forward even like why would you i don't know i, I sort of no think... i'm talking about commissioning a really expensive custom cover mm. for yeah. a book that's maybe off genre if that's you haven't got I mean. that money when it would be better spent on mm. the editing yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i that's... still do yeah yeah okay so you're not 
yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, but or or getting a pre-made you know for a um or a, a you know anyway that's mm. i guess just be mindful of what you're spending and be aware mm -hmm. that there are costs to this um yeah, and right. and usually it's the old story you either pay for something in time or dollars <laughs> some yeah, of the yeah. things that you can pay for in time and mm. others that you pay for in dollars so mm. yeah and there's nothing to say that just because you've written the book you have to put it up right now i no. know that that's really hard goodness knows we never did it <clears throat> but as trudy was saying if you really have your heart set on something like a particular cover or a particular editor that is really outside your budget then you just have to save for it because yeah. don't you do that in life anyway yeah, exactly so yeah. if you really want something ask for christmas presents exactly. and birthday presents that's that money, right whatever great you know. idea <laughs> whatever what and take do. i love it it's yeah. a great idea or help course. me get my crowdfund your family huh yeah love it love it love it love it but i think it's good to you know i mean none of us can tell you exactly how much you're going to earn particularly from your first few books you know that's just an impossible thing and, mm. and as much as we'd like to think we're psychic uh we're not um i i personally have a measure where if i'm putting something out there i like to think that i could recover the publication cost in the first year um, and by publication cost i'm talking about maybe editing and the cost of the cover but um that's again it depends on what you spend on that and you know um, along the piece of string how exactly so and and for a lot of authors a lot of authors they have to see three or four books up before they're starting to see a profit you know or yep. and by profit i mean it you know reasonable income coming in from yep. to meet those initial production costs mm -hmm. uh the other thing i would say and, and it's a slight diversion but it's still under the bean counting thing is um it's very inspiring seeing in uh, writing forums and Facebook groups and things, people sharing their um, income reports and these mm. sexy screenshots of, of sales and, and absolutely be inspired by that. But I think also often what's not talked about is what it costs to actually get those sales in as well, mm. because inevitably there will be an advertising budget to that. And that's 100% fine because that's like any other business. Mm. Um, but don't look at something that's six or seven figures and think that it just, it, that there wasn't an, a, an engine behind that kind of thing, mm. you know, so just yeah. know what you're looking at. Because you oh. don't know, like you, when you're looking at an Amazon um, <clears throat> dashboard, and it says what they've spent and what they've earned with regards to ads, perhaps. You don't know what other ads they've done outside of Amazon exactly. that actually directed them to Amazon to get those figures. Yeah. So I think that's what you were trying to say, wasn't it, Shah? Yeah. Because you just don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what other connections that they have in the industry, mm. whether they've got, you know, all kinds of things that mm. you don't know. So I think people, it's great to share good news and all of that. And I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer. I'm just saying, understand that there's, like I said before, there's always a cost to things, always. Mm. And um, often some of those huge, huge sellers will, will have a huge advertising budget and that's 100% fine, but they've, they've earned enough to better reinvest it like all yes. businesses into yes. their business. And they're often, so. they're often not newbies. No, you know, they've exactly. Been, they've been, exactly. And sometimes they've started a new pen name. Sometimes you look at a thing and Very go, oh, this often. is their second book, but actually no, yes. this is the, this is the fifth book yeah, of, a, exactly. of a really experienced author who's doing things mm. exactly Very often. You know? so, yeah. It's not that people no. are telling untruths. They're just no. excited about what yeah. they've achieved now. Oh, yeah. and they, <clears> but we're seeing amazing. it from a different aspect. And I know? think this is also a know yourself because, I mean, I personally love seeing those, right? I, mm. I yeah. love it. But there's also mm. people that get really, really low about seeing yes. those those kind of mm -hmm. posts and yeah. it makes them feel bad about, you know, because let's face it, people don't usually share the sales on their first or second book uh, or or when they're not selling, right? Mm. And so it's sort of selection is, it's it's the lens is very much looking at sort of the mm. people that are doing really well and it's really easy to feel down on yourself and so I think know yourself and if those things don't do it for you or make you feel no I would just leave the group or not bypass yeah. them you know what I mean like yeah. well, maybe just, just change know. your mindset around it like I feel like if you're yeah, looking at it and getting kind of down hard. 
that's mm. hard though. Yeah, like it's really easy to say change your mindset, but it's a whole other thing to to do it. Mm. Depending on what state you are in at the time, mm. you know, if you're already kind of self questioning, then mm. yeah, I think absolutely working on mindset's good. But don't <laughs> don't um don't don't whip yourself with the bad stuff. If, you know what I mean? Like protect yourself, mm. protect yeah. your vibe. It's like Renee says. Renee Rose says. If you look at someone and they're doing really well, and it used, and this is what I used to do, is like you go, oh, why can't I have that? Like, why yeah. are they to have that? I'm just as good a writer as they have. And instead of kind of letting those thoughts creep in, you go, I'll have some of that too, please. Yeah. You know, like you just yeah. let yourself be open to it instead Absolutely. of feeling that jealousy or that resentment or whatever that you're feeling. It doesn't so, help anyone. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, you're you, no one else. You know, you're, you're sort of almost doing it to yourself. Just yourself. So you can, yeah. And I, I totally get it because that's how I used to feel when I was looking at yeah. that kind of stuff. And now I. I've purposely changed it and see and like good on them I'm happy for them and I'll have some too please yeah and that's we'll link real... to Renee's yeah. uh, podcast as well just thinking mm -hmm. all right just to wrap it up because I know we've got to shoot off but it's also be a good scout and I was gonna put boy scout or girl scout but just a good scout in general and mm -hmm. it's just be aware of what contingency it's sort of like look after yourself in new ways like in businesses business planning a big part is risks and opportunities analysis it's kind of like that like what are the risks as in like if you go amazon exclusive what are the risks to that blah 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 yeah. um and also who you can use for support because no man is an island and by support i mean it might be outsourcing some things like yeah. you know suppliers or it might be just author friends or maybe you mm. need those maybe that's one of your projects is to actually develop an author support community mm. whether where you in turn can support others so yeah that's it nice and that's, an, that's the business plan sort of you've yeah. got us as part sort of, of the of. author community <laughs> so if you go to selfpublishingpodcast.com so that's actually our full name we we shorten it to spargo's podcast but if you go to the self publishing authors podcast dot com forward slash business plan that's where it is there we're oh, also yeah. going to link um, Joanna Penn, our friend over at the Creative Pen, did a, another very good um, explanation of business plans. Hers is slightly different, but that's pick and choose here. Um, yeah. And I'll link to her as well. Perfect. So let us know how you go. Mm. Yeah. Good luck with that. And we'll yeah. all awesome. we know how we go. I don't know. At some point, maybe we'll <coughs> sit down and do our own business plans and talk yeah. about what we're going to do. We'll do a Spa Girls one. Yeah. 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 I exactly. think that would be a good podcast. We can talk yeah. through it. Um, yeah. yeah. So if you want to um, join us, like I say, you can, if you go to spagirlspodcast.com, which is our shortened version of our website, which has got all our previous episodes on it. If you go to patreon.com forward slash spagirlspodcast, you can join our community there uh, where we can help you out <laughs> basically I mean, and that's with something us. that i think we're going to be doing in the group perhaps is yeah yeah talk Definitely. about the, the business plans and, and, yeah. and kind of go through work it with through it yeah I think work you, through some like the beginning of the year is often the time when people want to you know be ready recharged ready yeah. to go absolutely yeah. so from enjoy Awesome. Well, thank you all for listening to another episode of the Spa Girls podcast. Um, we will be back again next week with another episode. But for now, bye bye. 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 bye.